Thumbnail sketches are a great opportunity to get your ideas onto the page as quickly as you can. And because one of the primary goals is quantity, any time saver that Photoshop can provide is really worth trying. In this video, I'm going to show you the modular approach to making, in this case, some robot thumbnails. So the basic approach that I'm going to follow is to save time and energy by first drawing a library of bits, which is what you see over here on the right canvas, and then mix and match these bits and generate some robots, which is what I'm going to do on the left canvas. When I was a kid, I loved playing with Legos. Somehow using those prefabricated little chunks just really sped up the process of getting my own designs into something that was tangible. And when I got into the game industry, I found out that essentially the same technique is used all the time with 3D models, where artists will make some reusable bits, and then they'll combine these bits in various ways into different types of 3D models. So the canvas I've created here is a collection of robot legs, heads, body pieces, and then a bunch of little bits like cannons and machine guns and bullet straps. I'll try mixing and matching these pieces and we'll see what I come up with. So with the move tool active, I'm using the control key to select each of these layers. That way I don't have to worry about using the layer palette. Each of these objects on the bits canvas is in fact on its own layer. So I'll start with the set of legs and drag it over into my actual canvas. And then using the free transform, I'll mess with them a little bit to, to change the silhouette. Now I'm going to pick a body type. I'll go with this round one. And in this case, I'm not going to give him a head, but instead a sort of a radar dish. And now it's time to add some little doodads. This wire looks good. And maybe this little box with antennas on it. And if I don't like the way that looks, maybe I'll shrink it and make it stand out a little less. So there you go. That took, what, 30 seconds? And I had a, a silhouette that ends up looking like it was drawn. So let's do one more for practice. And other than just saving you time, this is actually good for uh, consistency reasons as well. In the real world, things like car companies will share parts between their various models. And they do this because, you know, building factory assembly lines are expensive. So anytime they can share an engine component between two different models, it saves them time and money. So if you were tasked with designing some uh, robot minions for some villain, it's likely that he would probably save time and money by sharing maybe legs or sharing an arm module between his various robot minions. But ultimately, saving the time is really nice as well. So in this case, if I want to make this shoulder be behind the body, I'm going to actually erase a little bit. So I'm not simply building, I'm drawing and erasing when I need to. But the goal is to do as much building as I can. So there you go. Maybe another minute and a half to build a second pretty detailed silhouette of a robot. So you could do this for an hour and you'd end up with a huge sheet. So as a concept artist, your responsibility is to think of new solutions to visual problems. And now this isn't always just designing the next robot. In this case, designing a way to make thumbnails faster was a creative solution that saved me tons of time. And I can go back and reuse these various thumbnail bits for future projects. So sometimes spending a little extra time up front to save a lot of time in the long run is what a concept artist is all about. 